Hi everybody. Welcome back to art class. Um, last week was awesome. You guys absolutely killed it with the Getty Museum Challenge. Thank you for that. I hope you've gotten to see the online video gallery that I posted yesterday. Um, if not, it's on my YouTube channel and you can see it there anytime you want, but you guys did so good with that. Thank you. Also, thank you, Natalie and everyone else who participated in my birthday video. That meant the world to me. You guys have no idea. So thank you. I miss you. Um, for now, this will have to be good enough. So this week, what I want to show you is the PowerPoint for our project we will be doing. So the last two weeks we've been, oops, um, you know, kind of silly, kind of fun, and we're still going to keep it fun and um, just not as silly. So I know a lot of people have been reaching out, not a lot, but I've got like Javion, Ariana, Samuk. There's a few of you guys that don't prefer photography, and you guys know me. Um, I'm all about choice, and I want it to be your choice. You are the artist. If you don't want to do photography for your project and you have art supplies at home, that is totally fine. You can draw or paint, colored pencil. My issue initially um, when we started online school was that I don't know what kind of art supplies you guys have. You know, some people might have their own set of um, Copic markers, but some people might have only watercolor. Some might not even have colored pencils or crayons, and so my idea with doing all photography for this whole online timeline was because you're always on your phones all day anyway so we might as well make some worthwhile art while we have our phones in our hands you see what i'm saying so that's my mo but if you wanted to propose an alternate assignment i'm always okay with that um for this assignment this week we are going to be a little more contemplative, a little more thoughtful and reflective with the photographs that we're taking. Yes, it'll still be fun, um, but it's going to be a little more curriculum based, if you will, but um, deep. Okay, you're going to be thinking about your work um, and not so much looking at like glamour shots for inspiration or historic artworks for inspiration. This is going to be your work. It's coming from your eye that talks to your mind, that decides this is a strong image to take. I'm gonna capture it with my phone and turn it into a photograph that I can use as a work of art for this project. Um, okay, so I'm, again, trying to be 15 minutes for every video, so I'm not taking too much of your time. Um, essentially, when we talk about photography, we're painting with light. That's what photography is. If you go back into the history of photography, it's, it's a viewfinder, right? There's a little hole. Okay, light comes into it, captures it, and then when you print it out, you have your image. You are painting with light. You are creating an image using light. Um, this week, what your assignment is going to be right here, it says shadow photography. I thought this would be really fun for you guys because you can't go to some epic museum right now. You can't go, you could go to a park probably, but it's going to be hard to go somewhere and take a picture of a beautiful place. Uh, so we might as well make a beautiful picture with the um, uh, with what we have and shadows we have every day. Um, so what we're going to be doing is using shadows as a tool to create stronger images. This one here on the left, yes, it is at a really cool place. However, the subject, the main focus of this image here is the shadows that lead down that pathway. On the right, you'll see it's an animal just shot from straight above, and we're going to talk about angles a little bit too. But the way that the sun is in the sky at that time when they did this photograph creates that long stretched out shadow, making that image so dramatic. And then look at the lines, right? Look at the dynamic movement that your eye has to follow because of the lines created with that photograph. Um, you can use something as simple in your home as a fork and a strong studio light. Like I've got this, um, this strong light here. It changes everything about where I'm at. Um, you could use a lamp for that. You could use a flashlight. You're going to get creative. You're going to use shadows as your main focus. Um, this here too, time of day, and also look at the composition. They're using again that rule of thirds that we talked about in the first week with our um, toilet paper photography project. It's broken up into thirds both ways, horizontally and vertically, and those long, long shadows. 
here on the right. Um, windows, we're going to talk about windows a little bit. Windows are a perfect place to capture really strong shadows depending on what time of day. But you could also create shadows kind of like this using if you have doilies in your kitchen, if you have any kind of lace clothing, um, using a spotlight or a flashlight in front of that and then shooting it with your camera, you can create really strong shadows too. So what I want to talk about first though is how you can create stronger photographs because a lot of your photos are good, but good is not great. We want to go for great and we can do it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is your subject. You're going to pick a subject, just one, and you're going to focus on it. You're going to get closer. You're going to experiment, explore. This, if you can't tell, is an orange that I just had on my counter. Um, also, we're going to be doing black and white photography for this project. I know color is something I'm all about. I even wore black today just to kind of reflect um, our project for this week, but we will be turning our images black and white. So subject, make sure you have a strong subject. It could be something simple, but you're going to get in really close. The balance. We talked about rule of thirds again that first week online with the TP photography project. Um, I want you to focus on that and not so much center something in the middle. Don't put it in the middle. It just, it's not as interesting as if you use the rule of thirds. I don't know if you can see that grid pattern here, but you'll see like the main subject in the foreground, these rocks is at the bottom third. The human subject on the right side here is in the right side third. And then you have all this negative space that kind of, it creates that balance of um, the point of interest. And then also down here, I got this from one, oops, one of my other art teacher friends. Um, she teaches for Florida Virtual School. She's a photography teacher, but she had this really cool image where it highlights the golden ratio and how the rule of thirds directly follows that golden ratio. So here we are, math in art, always. Um, so think about balance as you're shooting. Angles, a lot of you guys are already really natural at this and good, and I, I love it because I don't think my generation is as good at getting really low or really high or you know from the top from the side so just think about the angle that you're shooting in and um get just get kind of funky with it get creative take time again this is not going to be due until sunday and um we'll, we'll talk about that more um, and then the last thing, the most important one for this assignment is the lighting. So if you're inside going near a window, again, this is beautiful image, right? Soft shadows, soft focus. Um, this is another image from a student, a middle school student shot this picture right here from Florida Virtual. I used it as an example. I, it's just so stunning to me. Um, she's looking off to the side, so the subject is in close. The angle is a little bit down, right? The balance is a little off center, and then the lighting is soft, but you can tell she's right by a window and she's inside. Um, Outside, just consider what time of day it is. If you want to go outside and shoot, for example, this one on the right is one that I did yesterday for you guys for this PowerPoint. Um, it was right around like sunset time, 6, 6.30. So the shadows are going to be longer. Um, the light on my subject, which is just one of my plants, is going to be a little stronger. Um, this one down here on the left is kind of like it's a pretty picture, right? But for this project, this is what not to do because the shadows are not strong. The focus is more on the field, right? The landscape. Um, they're using a good strong rule of thirds, but when we're talking about using shadows as our main focus, this would be what not to do because it's just taking a picture of a pretty place and not creating a pretty picture out of a normal setting or object. Um, I hope I'm not going too fast. I wish I could hear you guys so bad. So we're going to look at three photographers really quickly. Um, the first one, he is one of my personal favorite, um, Henri Cartier-Bresson, if you can say that out loud. Um, he was a French humanist photographer, and um, he they call him like the master of candid photography. He uses soft, soft, soft shadows. There's nothing very like contrasty or intense about his images, but they capture a specific moment. Um, this one on the left here, I believe it was taken in Greece, but do you see the shadow, how it's like part of the main focus? And here again, he, he seizes a moment. Um, he's like the master of candid photography, um, the beginning of street photography. So the light here is almost as important as the shadows and the subject who's kind of caught in action as she's going up the stairs. It's just such a strong image. The one on the right here, again, soft, subtle shadows, but look at the time of day and the angle. Um, 
the shadows are long and the shadows are soft. And again, the rule of thirds, the main focus here would be the humans in their shadows and they're in that bottom third of this photograph. This is again, I mean, his work is just so beautiful. Um, I'll try to upload this PowerPoint in case some of you guys are really into researching like historic photographers because he's definitely going to be one that will inspire you and give you more ideas of how to make your work stronger. Um, uh, rule of thirds, again, look at the lines. I mean, there's so much focus here on lines. There's a cardinal outside my window. Oh, there's two. They're lovebirds. Sorry. Um, the shadows are soft. The subject is a little darker, so it stands out. But again, it's these lines. Um, and it captures a moment. It stops and makes you think, like, what is that little boy doing? Where is he? Why is there a wagon wheel, but there's no windows on these walls? And why is that door so high with no ladder? It stops and makes you think. Um, Dorothea Lange. So she's a 20th century American photographer, and she's female, so cheers to art history for including her in a lot of stuff. Um, she was more of like a documentary photographer or maybe like a photojournalist is what we would say, but her use of shadows, um, very strong, little tiny glimpses of light, right? The subject here, and so she's actually, if you research her, a lot of her work is a little bit depressing. She focused on like uh, the Great Depression, and so her work was traveling around America in the areas where the people were affected the most by the Great Depression. So her work is not as like light and curious. It tells you exactly. She like humanizes the consequences of how the Great Depression affected um, American citizens. But what I want you to look at more so than the content is the shadows, the lighting. You can tell there's a window over here, right? Her subject is telling a story. She's looking down. Clearly, she's not having a good time. And like, look at the walls. Look at the bed. There's not even a pillow. You can tell that the, there's a story here. And the, the light and the shadows kind of help to highlight that story. Um, again, on the left, you see the dark shadow here in the background, it kind of leads your eye into that tent. What's in that tent? What's not in that tent? Why is there a child playing in the dirt? Um, her shadows are a little more of like a medium scale, right? Compared to uh, Cartier Bresson, where his shadows are light and they're subtle, they're soft. Hers is more medium. It's not super intense or dark, um, but the shadows definitely play a role. Um, here in this one with the workers on the right, you could have the same effect if you have blinds in your home and you took a picture with an, a subject, like an object on a table and the blinds were hitting with the light at a certain time of day, or even like with your face up against the blinds could create really cool stripes um, that way with the shadows. Um, here, I think it's really interesting because again, medium amount of value, right? If we're talking about the elements of art, but his eyes, you can tell he's looking at us, but they're still in shadow. And so what does that say about the subject? He's covering up part of his face. Maybe he's talking, but he doesn't want her to hear. Um, maybe he's saying, I'm not hurt anyway. There's a story and the shadows help to tell that story. Um, this one here, again, there, you can't even see their heads. Their heads are cut off. So that says something about like what's more important in this image. It's not about the people. It's about the fact that what kind of outfits are they wearing? What kind of shoes? They're not wearing flip-flops and casual dresses. These are working men. They're working men. You can see that there's a train track here. So you can tell there's some kind of industrial job and their shadows kind of tell a story as well. It looks like maybe the end of a work day and their shadows are long. So it's not necessarily an easy life, it's a tough life and the shadows help to tell that um, narrative. All right, last photographer, we talked about Edward Weston two weeks ago, right? Do you guys remember when I showed you the video, that news clip from ABC of the, um, the potato that sold for a million dollars? And then we also looked at Edward Weston's pepper, historic, iconic image that just like shook American photography, or just photography around the world. So Edward Weston, also 20th century, also American, but he was much more about like the critical details of an image. You can tell the difference between the documentary photography, right, the photojournalism, and Edward Weston. He's at home, he's in a studio, he has a black box with a harsh, intense light source that he's using to create these deep shadows. So we went from Cartier-Bresson with his subtle, soft shadows, right? Just capturing a simple moment of human life to Dorothea Lange with her medium value shadows telling an intense, harsh narrative. Um, 
and then to Edward Weston, who he's not telling a story. He's just making art for the sake of art, but he's using the most intense values and shadows and lighting. I mean, this shell over here, that's what it is. It's a shell, but it looks like a person. And this cabbage leaf, um, it almost looks like a landscape. Here's another one of his famous peppers. He shoots these simple objects, just vegetables um, and shells in a, in a way that kind of humanizes them as well. Like this could be the curve of someone's body, but it could also be a landscape. This could be the side of a mountain. Oops, gosh, I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> um, but so the way that you use light and utilize shadows can totally make or break your image. Um, if you can't tell right away, this is a mushroom. It's just shot up really close. Again, so remember, we're looking at the subject and getting in close. Get curious, get creative. Use the lighting and the shadows to help your image become stronger. Um, this one, it's not as intense, right, with the detail as these, but I love that deep, deep shadow. It almost makes this kind of romantic, right? What is it, a squash, a pumpkin? So this is what you can do just by using light to paint your photograph. All right, so now to the, the fun part, your turn. Here are your steps to this project. Um, again, you have till Sunday, so don't rush it. Take your time. You could do like four pictures a day and then pick your favorite one of that day and then add it on, add it on, add it on, or just wait until one day and spend like one hour shooting. Um, you're gonna start the practice of looking around. Like, what do you actually see? Stop right now and look around your room, wherever you are, and like see if you could zoom in on a corner of your desk and make that a work of art. See if you could take a flashlight and shine it on your headphones somehow and create an intense shadow to make a beautiful work of art that's stronger, that's great. It's not just good, it's great, just by using the light. Um, be mindful of placement and environment, so where you are, we talked about that. Um, Consider your subject, consider the lighting, consider the balance, the rule of thirds. If you really wanna shoot something in the center of your image, I'm not gonna stop you, go for it. I just want you to be aware that you could make it more interesting if you did the rule of thirds. And then the angle, um, get really low, get really high. Okay, so I said that we are gonna be turning our images into black and white. This one on the left again is that one that I took last night around, I don't know, sunset time. Turning it black and white. Um, you can do it in PowerPoint, you could do it in Word, you could do it on your phone itself. There's a million ways to turn an image black and white. If you need help, I can help you, but I think you guys probably already know that better than I do. Um, so we're looking for shadows. This is just a shelf that fell off um, in my closet, and at a certain time of day when the light's coming through the window, this shadow just creates the most beautiful, I mean, it almost looks like an instrument to me. This is gorgeous. And so I saw these lines, I saw this long shadow that kind of reflects the object itself. I got low, I did different angles, I turned them black and white, and voila, I think those are pretty interesting and yours are gonna be even better. Um, this one's gonna be on your quiz, so pay attention. On the left, um, I shot last night a chiminea with some floral shadows coming off the trees above. This is my shot. Mr. Scotty, I don't want him to hear. Um, shot this one here with the flower and the chimney is still there so it's the same subject right same subject just different angles different balance and then his shadow is reflected down here on your quiz I'm gonna ask which one's better but I mean it's art so it's subjective but personally I like mine okay um so your turn you are going to take at least 12 photographs with strong shadows. The focus is the shadow. Subject, whatever you want. Placement, wherever you want. Um, lighting source, whatever, but at least 12. And then you're gonna select your top four. So remember the first week when we did the toilet paper, you had top three. Last week, you just had one. Um, the week before, you just had one. We're going back to several, so you're gonna pick your top four. They can be of the same subject or they can be something totally different. Just four top images. Convert them all to black and white. Um, and then you're gonna submit them to me the same way you have been the last three weeks. Email, classroom Instagram, or directly post it to the Smartest Artist channel. However, I have one bonus challenge for extra credit. Um, I will give you five automatic points on your total grade if you do this. Taking your four shadow images, um, 
and gridding them into one. So it's just one file, like a grid like this, almost like a photo collage. Uh, the top, I mean, these are, so these are some of the apps that I know of, Snapseed for like an iPhone, Photopea, um, it's for Chromebook, I believe. Pick Collage, I think you can get on your phone. And you guys probably know of other apps and programs you can use to make a grid and do a photo collage like this. So I know I went really fast. However, I will upload this in the assignments. If you have questions, ask me. I hope this all makes sense and sounds fun to you. I want you to get creative and just start looking at ordinary things and turning them beautiful because you can. Um, Again, you can propose an alternate assignment if you want to. Here, let's stop sharing the screen. And um, I will be putting in grades all week long. Um, I didn't do any from last week because I wanted to wait for everybody to catch up. I hope that this uh, system is starting to be smoother for everybody because I'm figuring it out pretty well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. No Frank and Simone this time. I'll include them in the next video. Promise. All right. Love you guys. Have fun. Reach out to me with any questions at all. Art class. Signing out. Until next time.